Welcome back Alpha Hunters. This video is going to cover the topic of calls and puts and their general relationship to the market, as well as options pricing and the options chain, and understanding how to read it. See you on the green side. We are going to fill out this grid throughout this video so we can get a better understanding of how options work in the marketplace. Don't forget to pause the video or go back and rewatch a segment to ensure you understand it. At the end, you will have a much better understanding of how options work within the market. So right off the bat, I'm going to give you a fair warning that people tend to struggle with understanding puts. But puts are basically the inverse of calls. So we will take our time and walk through some examples on how to use them. Let's start with a quick definition for calls and puts. So for a call option, the buyer or owner of a call option has the right to call away shares at the strike price if the stock is above the strike price by expiration and the seller or the writer is obligated to fulfill the contract. Okay. Put options, the buyer owner of a put option has the right to put two shares at the strike price if the stock is below the strike price by expiration. The seller writer is obligated to fulfill the contract. So you'll notice that the green text here is the only thing different between the two definitions. Don't overcomplicate the understanding of the definitions and the process of the transaction. Okay? So when, when we talk about calls, it's basically a contract that says I can buy stock at a specific price before the expiration date, on or around the expiration date, right? So if you buy a call option at, and the strike price, let's say you, you bought a strike price call option at the $50 strike price, you can then call away in the future, if the stock winds up going to 90, shares at 50, because that's what the call option says you can do. But let's say for puts, okay? For puts, let's say I want to buy insurance on positions that I own. So let's say I buy the strike price of $40, and the stock winds up dropping to $20. Well, I don't want to have to sell my stock at $20. I can use my put contract and put to my, my shares, put them to somebody at $40. So that's the difference. Okay. One, one allows you to buy away from somebody at a discount and one, and that would be a call option. And one allows you, and the other allows you to put to somebody, which would be a put option at a specific price. A quick look here at this image will hopefully clear it up if you are struggling a little bit. So on the left side, we have the buyers. Okay. These are the buyers of the contract. And over on the right side, these are the sellers. This top section, this will be the call. People interacting with calls. People interacting with puts. The buyers can call away the the share the stock from the sellers okay and the buyers of the put options can put to the sellers okay so that's that's generally just how the way the stock flow goes between the parties for calls the stock goes to the buyers if they choose to use the contract and for puts the stock goes to the sellers if they if buyers choose to use the contract Let's look at some examples to get a better understanding of how these definitions relate to the charts. Let's take a look at what in the money means and how, how to identify it for calls and puts. In the money simply means the buyer of the contract is in control of moving the shares of stock. In the money for call options is below the market price. And for puts, it's above the market price. If your contract is in the money, then you have control of the shares in your contract. What about out of the money? Well, 
just swap the positions of calls and puts, then they would be out of the money. So as I'm going back and forth here, you can just see between in the money here with puts on top and calls down below to out of the money here, calls are on top and puts are down below. Out of the money for calls is above the market price. And for puts, it's below the market price. And if in the money means the buyer has control over stock movement, then out of the money means the buyer has no control over stock movement. So this is the money status for calls, right? This is how, this is how it works for calls. As you see, below the, below the market price, this is in the money. And above the market price, this is out of the money. What about for puts? So this is the money status for puts. Out of the money is below the market price. And in the money is above the market price. Okay, so we have filled in our first two rows of this grid. Let's look at how the options generally change in value as the market changes in value. We'll start by looking at what happens to their values when the market goes up. So as the market moves higher, more call strike prices gain control over share movement with their in the money status. So calls will increase in value. But puts, on the other hand, as the market goes higher, the strike price for puts will lose control over share movement as they transition to out of the money status. So puts will decrease in value. So when, as the stock's down here, back over here, when it's down to like this $20 area, well, not that many strike prices for calls are in the money. Right, it's maybe 20, 15, 10, and five, or something like that. But as it went higher, later on, in between the 30 to 80, it gained, it gained all that kind of area. More strike prices wind up becoming in the money. And as more strike prices become in the money for call options, well, for put options, they must be going out of the money. And if they're going out of the money, that just means they are decreasing in value. So puts decrease in value as the market goes higher and calls increase in value as the market goes higher. So there we go, we filled in our third row. And now let's look at what happens when the market goes down. We have a downward market. So as you started up in the top left here and you work your way down, well, calls decrease in value because there's more on the left side, a lot more strike prices that are below the market price on the left side are in the money. But as we move to the right, well, less strike prices are in the money for calls. Okay. So if there's less strike prices that are in the money for calls, that means call options are going down. Call options will be de decreasing in value as the market goes lower. Put options, on the other hand, as the market goes lower, will increase in value. As more of the options, strike prices, become in the money, this will increase the value of put options. So again, calls decrease in value as the market goes lower, and puts increase in value as the market goes lower. So let's go ahead and take a look at a sideways market, or a market going sideways. Now, this is maybe a little bit advanced and I'm, I'm not going to cover in depth as to why this is the way it is, but I kind of just want to start feeding out breadcrumbs if you are new to options as to why this is and just how calls and puts and options just kind of work in the marketplace. So I just kind of want to get you used to this. We can go into more depth later at a later time, but I just want to start giving you some breadcrumbs, okay? So during a sideways market, as the market goes sideways, you can't get more, much more sideways than what you see on the screen here. Let's say 45 is the high end and 40 is the low end. So we're just trading sideways in between that range. So in a sideways market, both calls and puts decrease in value as the market goes sideways from a decrease in time value. Okay, so these are contracts that have expiration dates and they need to make a move by a certain time period. So if the market just goes sideways, 
they will lose value, the options will lose value from just time decay. So these are just some basic concepts. I just kind of want you to understand, get your familiar, just familiarity with it, but you don't have to fully understand the in-depth uh, impact of time loss and, and that kind of stuff. That can go into an, another time in, in much more detail. So we fill in the top section here. And what I want you to notice is calls and puts that there are two arrows, two red arrows downward for both calls and puts for their value in the marketplace, okay? And really for the call, the only up arrow it has if, is if the market goes up. And for puts, the only green arrow it has going up is if the market goes down. So as we continue to fill out this grid, you will start to notice patterns like that. So, so far we have just been looking at how calls and puts work in the marketplace. Let's now talk about the different positions we can take with calls and puts and how those positions work in the marketplace. So if you've already been thinking, how can I use the options? Do I have to be a buyer only or do I have to sell? Well, let's talk about that. So in opening a position of a call options contract or a put options contract, you can actually be on either side. You can be on the buying side where these lovely gentlemen are, or you can be where the sellers are, where it looks like a typical insurance guy in the background here. And how this will look in your account is if you sell to open a position, you will actually have a negative and whatever your quantity is here, but I'm just using one for each one of these examples, whether it's a call or a put, it'll be a negative. But if you're on the buying side, you will see a positive one, okay? Or a, po a positive in whatever your quantity was. So and I really hope that your first inclination wasn't just to think, okay, I'm gonna be buying contracts, well, it, that is very consumerist type of mindset. And I get that most of us have been learned and taught to be consumers and consumers of, and consumers and just consumers of everything, like consume content, you know, uh, clothing, shopping, all that kind of stuff. But really, you can be a seller here, right? And in, and in anything in, in business and in life, there's really two ways to make money doing uh, with anything. You can buy low and sell high, or you can sell high and buy low. Okay? And there's no right or wrong way with options on how to make money with them. There are right and wrong ways on how to implement strategies with options, but there's no right or wrong way. Buyers of options make money. Sellers of options make money. It, it just comes down to how you execute and choose to use them in, in your investment and trading strategies. Okay. So you can either buy low and sell high, which would what, which is what the buyers of options look to do. The buyers of options look to buy low and sell high. Or you can sell high and buy low, which is what the sellers are trying to do, okay? They're trying to sell high and then buy it back at a lower price later, and that's how they make money. But there's no right or wrong way. There's just a right or wrong way on how to, how to execute a strategy or strategies. Okay, so to open a position, we can buy a call. We can also sell a call option. We can buy a put option and we can sell a put option. So now that we understand that we can buy and sell calls and puts to open positions, the next thing we want to do is understand how the market impacts each of these positions. So let's talk about premiums and what I mean by premiums, okay? So the basics of, of the transaction between buyers and sellers is they are exchanging things, right? I mean, that's usually what happens when you're a buyer. You go to a store and you buy a, a sweater. Well, you're buying a sweater, right? So the buyers here, 
They're buying a contract. They're buying the options contract. Okay. And what do you give up when you buy that sweater? Well, you give up cash. In the world of trading options, it's called premiums. We give up premiums. So this is the buyers paying cash or premiums to the sellers in exchange for the contract, no matter which side you're on, calls or puts. So the buyers, they get the contract. The sellers, they get the premiums. They get the cash. And it's just like if you, you know, buying car insurance or home insurance right you pay premium sometimes monthly or maybe you pay for six months and then in, in exchange for you paying for something they give you the contract of insurance that they will cover damages to your car or home uh, above a certain amount you know in the case of a car if your deductible is a thousand dollars you pay up to that thousand dollars and then they'll pay past that right that's part of the contract so that's that's what's going on here the buyers are paying the premiums but the sellers are giving the buyers the contract. So when you buy, whether you buy a call or you buy a put, your premiums are outgoing. They're going out, right? You're paying cash out. But if you sell an option, you sell a put option or you sell a call option, right? It's coming in. You have incoming cash or premiums. Now, this debit and credit and what that means is is outgoing cash will be a debit and incoming cash will be a credit, whether it's a call or a put. You know, buyers, they pay out cash. That's going to be a debit. And sellers, they they collect cash. It's incoming to them. It's a credit. Now, the reason why I have debit and credit here is for the simple fact that most brokers label this as debit or credit. So when you go and your trade verification window, like the last window that you see, your little trade summary window, right before you hit submit, it'll probably pop up and say $500 debit or $500 credit. You know, it'll have it'll say usually something like that in, in the terms of debit or credit. And when you open these positions, this is the kind of directional play that you are wanting out of that position. So when you buy calls, you are bullish. You want the stock to go up. When you sell calls, you're just not bullish. You're just not bullish. You don't care if it goes sideways or down. You're just not bullish. With puts, if you buy puts, you're bearish. Okay, you want the stock to go down. If you sell puts, you're just not bearish. You don't care if it goes up or sideways. You're just not bearish. Now let's take a look at how these options positions respond to the way the market moves. So let's start by looking at an upward market. Okay, so back to this scenario, right? So calls will go up in value as the market goes higher, right? Now, if you are a buyer and if you buy calls and the calls increase in value, you're making money, right? But if you sell calls and they go higher, well, that's not good for you because you're losing money. But puts, well, they decrease in value as the market goes higher. So if you buy puts and the market goes higher, your puts will decrease in value. But if you sold puts, that would increase. That would be an increase in value for you because you already sold them. You sold them at, at a price that was higher. But as the market goes higher, and if you sold puts, and the, and the puts decrease in value and the lower value of the puts means that you've made money from where you sold them. So this is how that looks, okay? Mark it up. If you bought calls, you'll be up. If you sold calls, you'll be down on your position. Puts, if you bought puts and the market goes higher, you will lose money on the puts, on the puts you bought. Now, if you sold puts, you will be increasing in value as the market goes up, okay? So let's look at a downward market. So in a downward market, so calls decrease in value as the market goes lower, okay? So if you bought a call option and calls decrease in value, that means you're losing money if you bought call options. But if you sold call options and the market decreases in value, 
then that's good for you because that means you can buy it back later at a cheaper price. Now, for if you bought a put and puts increase in value as the market goes lower, so if you bought a put, you'll be making money as the market goes lower. But if you sold a put option and the market goes down, you will lose money because puts increase in value as the market goes lower. So if you sold a put option, you're kind of selling the option at a lower price and then the option goes higher. As the market goes lower, the put options will go higher and then you'll have to buy it back at a higher price. This is the way uh, these positions work in a downward market. So if you buy a call and the market goes down, well, you'll lose money, okay? If you sell a call and the market goes down, you will make money. But if you buy a put option and the market goes down, you will make money. And then if you sell a put option and the market goes down, you will lose money. So what about a sideways market? So what, what about then? Who, who makes money in the sideways market? Well, let's look at that. So let's go back to the sideways market example. And remember the definition for sideways market is both calls and puts will decrease in value as the market goes sideways. And it's just generally from a decrease in time value. Now, as long as we know that they will decrease in value if the market goes sideways, well, if they decrease in value, if you're buying something and it's gonna decrease in value, well, that's not good for you. So if you're buying a call option and it decreases in value, well, you're losing money. And the same thing for a put option. If you buy a put option and it decreases in value as the market goes sideways, that's not good for you either. But what if you sell options, right? So if you sell a call option, right? You sell that call option for a dollar and it decreases in value as the market goes sideways and you're able to buy it back for 25 cents, well then there you go. You just made some money. Same thing with selling put options. As the market goes sideways and, it de and the option decreases in value, you're able to buy back at a lower price than what you originally sold it at. So this is how this looks, okay? So market sideways, buyer of call option and buyer of put option go down in value. The seller of call option and the seller of the put option go up in value. Now, this last topic I'm gonna talk about, assignment, there's actually many different words you'll hear used with it. And some of those are gonna be exercise, assign, and assignment. So these are probably the three most common ones you'll hear, but they all pretty much mean about the same thing. And it is the process of moving the shares deemed by the contract initiated by the buyer as long as the contract is in the money. Now this is typically executed on the last day or two before the contract is no longer valid. Uh, but there could be some cases where you get executed well before then. I have been executed well before before then, but it's not a word that we'll talk about here. But typically, it's, it's right around the expiration time frame of the last day or so. So call buyers force the call sellers to sell the shares at the strike price of the contract. Sellers must hold up their end of the contract. Put buyers force the put sellers to buy the shares at the strike price of the contract. And the sellers must hold up their end of the contract. So it goes back to, back to this, right? So the buyers paid the premiums to the sellers. Now the buyers, if they're in the money, as long as they're in the money, they can say, bring me that stock as well. Or let me buy that stock at the strike price that you that we agreed to in the contract and the put the put buyers say hey i'm gonna give you this lovely package of you know what's in it at the strike price we agreed upon you know the stock might be at twenty dollars but if the strike price in the contract was fifty dollars well the sellers have to buy it at fifty dollars from the buyers and for the buyers you know if the stock winds up going to a hundred but your strike price is sixty they have to sell you shares at $60, even though the market price is 100. So that's basically what assignment is. It's just the process of moving shares and it's initiated by the buyer. 
and the buyer of the call option they take away you know they can take away from the seller and the seller must give and the buyer of put options well they force shares to the seller at the strike price and the seller must take the shares so that's how that works and i know it might be a lot feel free to screenshot this uh and just until you're very comfortable with what uh, you kind of know how things interact and things and things like that but but some quick quick things that we can notice you know is buying call options well there's only one way to make money with call options and that's in an upward market a market going up but if you sell call options well there's two ways to make money if the market goes down and the market goes sideways but if you buy puts there's only one way to make money with buying puts and that's if the market goes down and if you sell puts, there's two ways to make money. And that's if the market goes up and the market goes sideways. So let's look at some options pricing. So the way you calculate your trade value for a stock is the price per share, right? Price per share times you the quantity, the number of shares you want to buy. And that gets you your trade value. But for options pricing, it's a little different. You have price per share and then times the 100. And this gets you your per contract value. Then you times it by the quantity, and that gets you your trade value. This 100 multiplier is for the adjustment to account for the standardized number of shares in the contract. So every options contract already has 100 shares tied to that options contract. So let's look at a quick example. Okay, let's say a stock we, we want to buy a stock for $95 and we want to buy 300 shares. That would cost $28,500. But for an options contract, let's say we found an options contract for $2.50. Now we got to multiply that by 100 to get the contract value of $250 and then multiply that times three because we want to control 300 shares just like we did over here with the stock. And that total would be $750. So if this is any way confusing and trying to think about option, like this is how options will price is on a per share basis like this. And we got to multiply that 100 to figure out then the per contract price. Now we don't need to figure this out. Your, you know, your broker will kind of just do it for you. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about setting in, uh, you know, the right, the right price and stuff like that. But this is how options will price on the options chain. And we're, I'll show that here in just a second. We'll kind of maybe walk through an example or two. Don't overcomplicate this. And really, like, the easiest way to, to look at this is just don't even look like there's a decimal there. And you'll, and you'll see that 250 here is the 250 here. Okay, so don't even look at that decimal. Don't even worry about that decimal. And that's the price of the... That's just the price of the option, okay? That's just the price of the contract. And then you just need to multiply that by the quantity you want, three in this case, and then then, then you get your, your trade value of 750. So let me transition to my broker and be back in one second your time. Okay, welcome back. This is my simulated broker. And what I want to show you is how the options chain works. And, you know, and then we'll look at an options pricing or two just to kind of get your general sense of what you're looking at. Okay. So this is typically how you'll see it. In most brokers, this is how you'll see it. Okay. You will see a bunch of dates. You'll see these right here. Strike price, right? Strike price. And your expiration that's actually what oh. so your expiration is actually here so you'll see it listed here but the way you actually open it up right so you just december 6 december 3rd december 3rd but it lines up here but so if you want to change expirations you just pick the expiration you want and it goes uh here it's set up to where the near term is the and on top and you scroll down to go farther out. Okay. So I picked this, this is the stock I trade a lot, the spy. So remember there's four things we need to know to get a stock 
first thing is the underlying assets. The, so the spy right here. And then, then the next thing we pick uh, an expiration date. And we can pick anything. So we'll just pick December 6th. Okay. And then the next thing we want to do is like, what strike are we looking to trade? All right. So, so let's pick this 452 strike right here, right on top. That way it's easy for us to find it. Uh, and I almost forgot on the left side here. So this is the call side right here. Calls, calls right here. And on the right side over here, puts. Now look at the order of the strike prices, right? And they're arranged lowest to highest. Don't know why that is. Maybe someone at Thinkorswim can tell me, but it is arranged lowest to highest. So this highlighted area right here, this is in the money options, okay? This dark, this black area, this is out of the money. Okay, so on the put side, right, this shaded area, this is in the money. This dark area is out of the money. Okay, remember puts are anything, all strike prices above the current market price. Okay, and the current market price is between 457.39 and 457.41. So 457 would be in the money for calls and anything below that for and for puts 458 is in the money and anything above that strike prices above that okay so that's how the options chain just kind of works and then each one of these options is kind of like its own market and that's where a lot of people kind of also get confused with options is they think well, if I buy one, if I buy one and I sell one, then I'm closed out. Well, it's like, no, you got to close out the same position. And that's not, so, so just because you buy one and you sell one, doesn't mean you're closed out unless you bought and sold the same one. Okay. Now let's get into some strategies, a little bit different strategies. But the thing that you need to know is that each one of these is its own market. Okay, so like Apple stock is its own market compared to Microsoft or Google or Amazon or Facebook. This 452 put is its own market and it's not the same as the 453 put market or the 454 put market or the 455 put market. Okay, those are all separate markets. Those are all separate stocks or those are all separate options that can be traded. Okay. So let's, let's go ahead and look at calculating how much it would cost to put on an options contract. Okay. So up here in the top right, I put up a sticky note. Okay. So let's say we want to, we just want to compare and we want to buy 200 shares of the SPY, okay, of the SPY. Now, the current market price we'll say is 459.40, okay? So 459.40. So SPY stock. So 450. Um, sorry, 457.40. I think I said 459, but so. So 457.40 will be the stock price, and we will multiply that by 200 to get our position. Okay, so 457.40 times 200, 91,480. 91,480. So to buy 200 shares of SPY stock at $457.40, you would need $91,480. That's how much cash you would need, okay? But what about the option, okay? 
So I'll move that a little bit off screen. I'll bring it back in just a second. So spy, we'll say December, uh, December 6, call option at 4.52, okay? So the spy, December 6, 4.52, call option is right here. And we'll just take, we'll say 4.78. It's a little bit closer to this 4.77, and most likely you're going to be paying closer to this side. The ask, whenever you buy anything in the market, you will buy closer to the ask, okay, closer to the ask, and sell closer to the bid. Okay, if it was inverse to that, then everybody would just make money. Okay, so we got, so we got, we're going to use 478. So 470, uh, 470, we're going to use 875. I'm, what the heck, man? 875. And then we are going to multiply that by 100. Hundred, and that gets us eight hundred and seventy-five dollars. Okay, now we need to multiply that by two, right? So times two. So this is per. I'm gonna per share. So we need to multiply that by two, and so that's per share. And then this value right here this is per per contract, right? And then we want to buy two of those contracts so that we're in control of 200 shares. So so if we did eight, um, 8.75 times 100, right? That gets us 875. And then times two, enter. So it would cost us $1,750 to buy a call option at 452 for only seven $1,750. So $1,750. Okay. So that's, so this is where options become as hugely valuable. If you know how to use them correctly and they they can become hugely powerful because of the margin that they have instilled in them so don't over leverage yourself i mean they are leveraged already so just be careful on your leverage when you're using options especially in the beginning until you kind of get how they work um in and out and you see a major downtrend and you kind of see how that in, um can go against you and make sure you're not over leveraged in those situations. But this is this is hugely powerful to understand as you try to as you go to make money in the marketplace. Options can be hugely beneficial. Okay, but that's how you price options, okay? And this is the options chain. Okay, so would you rather pay 91,480 for 200 shares of stock or would you rather pay $1,750 to control 200 shares of stock. So it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. There's no right or wrong answer there, right? If you if you want to buy 200 shares of, of the SPY, then do it. It's just going to cost that much, you know? But if you have a different look on things, maybe you don't want to fork up that much capital. Maybe you'd rather just buy two options for that, for that amount of money, for $1,750. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's just dependent on what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. What if you what if you sold these options and collected that premium? Okay. Now I wouldn't sell those options. There's different ways to kind of go about selling better options, but you know you can sell options and collect collect some pretty good cash flow. So we can look at that later as we look at strategies. But but this is the options chain. Okay. So. I would just say whatever broker you're using, just get in there and start getting familiar with how they have their options chain set up. Most of them, they they have a little different look and feel 
But for the most part, it will be generally kind of like this. Okay, it just might have a little different look and feel. But but you won't you won't see something too different. The only thing I would like to see different in, in options pricing is to take out the stinking decimal. And you know, if we get enough people kind of jiving in on that, uh, you know, we should definitely get the CEO, the CBOE to uh, to change that. Okay. So yeah, if you're, but if you're if you're appreciating this content, you're liking it, um, give me a like. If you don't know really kind of what's going on, give me a comment. Let me know what I can clear up for you. If you do, if you are liking it, hey, you're like, hey, I, I really like how you did this, how I taught, how I showed this example. You know, let me know. Let me know. I will gladly go over it. Um, there, there's something about being a little bit more experienced and trying to go back and teach some of the more basic stuff that you're just kind of used to, uh, that is very difficult and making sure, uh, that I, I relate it all to you. Cause it's all hugely valuable to know. And you don't realize how valuable it is until it's just second nature. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I do want you guys to get this and understand it. Feel free to definitely ask me a question of how I can help you or what I can clear up. Uh, but the videos, they'll keep coming and hopefully this was hugely valuable to you. That's, that's all I'm trying to do is bring value to you. Alrighty. Take care, Alpha Hunters.